Well hello and welcome back to the Solar Professor video series. Today we're going to continue our journey through solar and we're going to be talking specifically today about uh, inverters. And inverters are the heart of a solar photovoltaic system and so we're going to spend a little bit of time on this topic. Normally in my classroom I would spend you know three hours or more uh, specifically on inverters but I'm going to try to get through this video um, as quickly as possible and give you kind of an abridged version of uh, what inverters do and, and what they're all about. So let's get started right away. Um, we, got, we have some types of inverters listed here. Um, and what we see here is a standalone inverter, and this is a, a typical standalone inverter. And there's other brands in the marketplace, and I'll be covering brands in just a second. Um, the other ones here that we're looking at are utility interactive inverters. And if you remember from uh, previous lessons, a utility interactive inverter is a grid-tied inverter. And that's really the most common type of inverter that we're seeing out on the marketplace today. I skipped here what is an inverter. You know, we, we talked about this earlier. Um, but an inverter really, again, like I said before, is, is the heart of a solar system and it is the electronic device that converts direct current, which is what a solar panel produces, to alternating current. So it's usable in the house or the commercial business or wherever because, you know, most commercial, most residential homes run um, on alternating current. I'm not going to get into um, the specifics of um, AC versus DC in this particular video, although some folks often do that when we're talking about inverters. We can do that um, at another time when I actually talk about electricity uh, with you guys. But uh, today, specifically, I just want to talk about the products. And I don't want to get too deep into it either in functionality. I'll leave that to my friends who are electrical engineers to, to get into it. But what I want to talk more about is the practical application what it is, what it does, and how we can go ahead uh, and use it in the solar systems that we are uh, designing and creating and installing for folks. All right, uh, here's some uh, inverter basics, and I know there's a lot of words up here, and I have also, um, as I mentioned earlier in other videos, provided these slides at the Solar Professor, excuse me, SolarProfessor.com website. Uh, for you to go through, you know, maybe as you're looking through the uh, the video with me here. Um, first thing, how does it an inverter work? We already covered that. Um, <clears throat> typical cost of an inverter is approximately yeah, 50 to 75 cents per watt. Um, it's less with scale, meaning you know, uh, if you got a larger system, it's, it it can cost a little less, and and that's really an approximate cost, you know. Uh, inverters are priced almost like a commodity now in the, in the marketplace. Um, industry's up, industry's down. Uh, inverter prices are up and down. It's a supply and demand situation, really quite similar to um, photovoltaic modules. And there's tons of manufacturers of photovoltaic modules. Uh, there's quite a few manufacturers of inverters, and um, we'll you know we'll take a look at a few common ones, but I'm not going to recommend specifically one over the other. I'll tell you the differences between them, and that's, that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, no maintenance is, is required with an inverter. That's one of the nice things about a photovoltaic solar system. You know, it's, it doesn't have moving parts. Um, really, things aren't going to break on it. Uh, it's solid state. It, it should last its warranty period. Oftentimes, it's a 25-year warranty. Uh, some inverter manufacturers start at a 10-year warranty, and then you can buy your way up to a 25-year warranty. I, I do recommend doing that um, if you have the opportunity to do it. Um, <clears throat> available from a very small amount of um, kilowatts for residential systems up to um, about 12 kilowatts for residential. Um, if you're going to exceed that in a project, maybe you're doing a commercial project, maybe you're doing a really large residential, and I've done them, um, you might need multiple inverters, and, and that's a possibility. And it depends on the type of inverter that you're going to get. We're going to talk about that in, in just a few minutes, whether it is a standalone, or excuse me, it, whether it is a, a string inverter, or whether it is a um, optimizer, or whether it's a microinverter. Um, almost all inverters have maximum power point tracking and built-in DC ground fault protection. Um, grounding and ground faults, super important. Uh, when we're installing, we want to make sure things are grounded properly so that they're safe. Um, 
maximum PowerPoint track, and we call it MPPT in the industry. And what that does is, is the inverter being an electronic device, it wants to find the sweet spot in the IV curve. And we're going to talk specifically about IV curves in another video. Um, and it wants to stay there. And so an MPPT inverter will try to lock into the knee of that um, IV curve for as long as it can, depending on sun conditions and what's, you know, what's happening with the environment around it. Um, heat can affect the inverter. There's different things that will uh, affect the inverter, but it's going to try to stay at its maximum production for its wattage as long as it can. And that's really uh, what the rudimentary meaning of maximum PowerPoint tracking is. Single uh, inverter is typically better than two small cost-wise. Uh, makes sense. Um, you know, uh, sometimes if you get two inverters, you may have some extra power you don't need, and you're, you're paying for that, that extra power that's not necessary. Um, let's, let's take a look and continue on here. <clears throat> More about inverters here. We've got uh, residential inverters are what the residential um, utility grid is, and that is either 120 volts or 240 volts. Most inverters are uh, dual pole and they require two breaker spaces so that you can get 240 volts out of the inverter. Um, larger than 12 kilowatts are typically for uh, commercial systems and there's different types of commercial systems. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, alternating current down the road and we can talk a little bit more about uh, different types of uh, commercial voltages. You'll see 208, you'll see 480, sometimes there's 240 uh, commercial three phase um, sometimes there's 277. It just it depends on the equipment that you're using. It depends on the transformer that you're trying to connect the inverter to, and that's that's really important when you're um, doing a commercial application. Uh, typically, one to four strings if you're setting up a string system, <coughs> and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, one to four strings of modules can feed the uh, inverter. And it depends if you if you choose to do a combiner box or not. I'm going to talk about balance of system equipment in another video, and we'll go over uh, what those items are and what they're for. Um, inverters range between 92% efficiency. Some of the older off-grid inverters were 85% efficient. Um, inverter technology has come quite a, a long way in the past 10 years, and we're getting inverters that are almost 99% efficient. That means its ability to convert from direct current to alternating current. 99% um, efficiency is, is pretty darn um, good in that, uh, in that situation. Temperatures affect in inverter performance as I mentioned earlier. The hotter it is, you know, the less output the inverter is going to have. I've seen inverters mounted directly on the, the south side of a building in the sunlight that's not the best approach. Um, inverters are a pretty solid state. They'll handle heat. They'll handle cold. Um, they can handle crazy conditions like windstorms and sandstorms and things like that. They're tested for that uh, type of thing. Especially some of the uh, the major brands out there uh, are really bulletproof type systems. Um, but you know we want to do the best that we can to limit uh, it overheating. Any electronic device gets too hot, you know what's going to happen to it. Uh, your phone, for example, keep it in your pocket too long or set it on the dashboard, it'll actually shut off. And so we want to be wary of temperature. Um, best to be as close to main service panel as possible, absolutely. Um, the less distance we have for wire runs, the less um, issues we may have with voltage drop. And so uh, that's, and, <clears throat> and again, when we get into uh, electronic and, and electric basics, which I'll cover later on. Uh, that's one thing that that we'll we'll definitely talk about is uh, is voltage drop and also you know wire sizing uh, for distances and, and such. Um, some inverters have built-in AC and DC disconnects, and that's nice to have a uh, a disconnect right in the inverter. And I have a picture of uh, one here that I'll show you in just a second. That's really it in a nutshell. And and now let's cover a few um, common brands. We have SMA. Uh, SMA, you'll notice uh, oftentimes it's a red color, sometimes it's a gray color. They have different colors for different applications uh, of their inverters. I actually have an SMA inverter right here, uh, sitting here, and you can just see the, the, the top of it, and it is red just like that one. Uh, Fronius, another uh, popular brand that's used out in the industry. These ones are uh, string inverters. 
Outback, that's this black one right here. Outback is an off-grid inverter, a popular brand. Although other manufacturers like SMA have um, off-grid type um, application products as well. Um, Solar Edge, it's a string optimizer, and I'll get to that in a minute, what that really is. That's uh, this one right here. And so you get a little box right here. Not only do you have a inverter, you'll have a uh, little box that goes under each solar panel. And then the last one here is a brand uh, Enphase, and they make a microinverter. It looks like this. I actually have um, an Enphase microinverter right here. Um, just a little box. Uh, they're black now. They've changed the shape a little bit. Um, I've been installing Enphase microinverters since they first came out. Same thing with optimizers. You know, Enphase is on iteration six or something like that. Uh, they've really come a long way with the with the uh, product development and, and such. Um, again, specific types of products for specific applications. So let's get a little bit more into that. Um, maybe, but before we do, I want to uh, mention a couple of things about installing inverters. Again, I had mentioned this. Uh, cool is important for the location of it. Convenient, so it can be. Um, you, if, you, if you're interested in looking at the actual display on the inverter in a location that you can see it easily. And there are NEC requirements for heights uh, and uh, of mounting the inverter and, and we want to be uh, aware of that. In fact, um, any means of disconnect and, and oftentimes inverters, um, string inverters, have disconnects uh, built into them. I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. Um, between 48 inches, so four feet, and then six and a half feet is where that disconnect needs to be uh, according to the NEC so it actually is accessible and you, and you can actually be in an area where you can switch it off. Um, you know, most people with, 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 of a certain height can switch it off. Uh, mounting, sometimes the inverters are heavy. The older uh, inverters had transformers in there. Transformers are, are really heavy pieces of uh, componentry that's inside the inverter. The newer in inverters are transformerless, they're a little bit lighter, but still we want to mount them in studs so they don't fall off the wall. Maybe we want to use a back plate for that. Um, connections, we're going to always want to wire properly according to NEC. We're going to want to follow the instructions from the inverter manufacturer, that's a huge deal. We're going to want to use our raceways, our um, EMT, electrometallic uh, tubing, or, or our liquid type. Those are types of uh, conduit for us to use uh, when we're installing our inverters. That's uh, very important. And then, of course, um, aesthetics I put on there is important too. And what I mean by that is when you're installing, make sure that um, your conduit is bent at 90 degree angles. Uh, make sure that the inverter uh, looks nice. Everything is aesthetically pleasing. Um, and it's a quality installation. And, and when it looks good, uh, folks feel and they can trust that it, that it is a quality uh, installation and, that, and you know that's what we're shooting for in the industry. A couple more uh, things here that I want to mention. Inverters are fantastic these days because of the monitoring that they offer. You can see some of the pictures up here. String inverters allow you to see the power production of, of that uh, solar system, the entire array. Um, an advantage to uh, both microinverters which is here and uh, power optimizers is that they actually um, you can see the individual production from each solar panel and that is a huge advantage especially in, in residential applications when you have smaller systems we're mostly leaning towards the micro products or the um, power optimizer products um, because of the fact that they have this fantastic monitor monitoring a um, couple of more things. Here's a string and specific string inverter. Uh, inverter's prime purpose, of course, is to convert DC power from the array to utility compliant AC power. So it has to match the power grid. And that's what these components are masterful at doing. The inverter uh, conditions the power to match 60 Hertz wave uh, from, or excuse me, waveform of the grid and is considered a power conditioning unit. Uh, many inverters perform maximum power point tracking, which I mentioned already, um, at 99% efficiency. Grid tied inverters have an anti islanding feature. This is really important, and that's why I mentioned it here, which turns them off in the event of a grid outage. So, one of the big questions in the industry is if the power goes out, will my system continue to work? And the answer is 
Maybe. It depends on the type of equipment you have. If you have just a standard string inverter like this, no, it's actually going to shut off. Um, some of the, uh, the products, if, if we're setting up a um, bimodal system, the whole point of that is to have a battery backup along with it and then your system will continue to operate. If it is a complete off-grid system, of course it's going to continue to work if the power grid goes out. So there's differences there that we need to be aware of, but um, the standard system, which is a utility interactive system, um, and, is, and it, which is directly just connected to the power grid, will actually shut off if the power goes out. Um, so very important to, to, to note that and mention that to um, your customers or understand that as a, as a consumer. Hybrid inverters um, allow for battery or generator backup. So, and we mentioned the, the types of systems before, and a hybrid system allows you to have other components there. It could be a generator, it could be a wind turbine, and, and such. Um, here's an integrated string inverter. This is what I mentioned earlier. This is an SMA brand as well. It actually has a disconnect and a combiner box built right in. So it's all in one uh, unit, and most of the time, our um, string inverters are set up in this way, so they've got the disconnect there. A couple more slides here for you guys. Here's a micro inverter. Um, one of the advantages of micro inverters is alternating current off the roof. Um, you need to use one micro inverter uh, for each solar panel, and they are on the roof. And yes, they they do get hot. And people say, well, you know, are they going to last as long? Well, you know, some of them come with 25-year warranties, and so it'll be replaced if there's, if there's a problem uh, with its functionality or if, or if it goes down. Um, here's power optimizers. They increase energy output from PV systems by constantly tracking the maximum power point as well. In fact, really all modern inverters are going to provide um, MPPT, and so a uh, power optimizer is very similar to a microinverter in that you have to have one um, per solar panel on the roof. There's less components in a power optimizer and power optimizers keep the, um, uh, the current as direct current off of the roof. It's not alternating current off the roof. So that, that's an interesting difference. That's why you have to have the inverter box as well. So, what I would recommend doing is, is pricing the difference and then you can see you know, what suits your budget the best. Um, there, and, and I would also recommend this, and this is, this is a, a very important. Go to the manufacturer's website and do your research and your homework, whether you're going to choose a power optimizer or a microinverter or a, even a, just a string inverter for your specific system because uh, there are significant differences between them and I, we don't have enough time to get into it on this particular um, video uh, but understanding the websites and doing a little bit of research is, will, will go a long way with uh, inverter technology. Um, any questions feel free to uh, send me an email uh, you can go to the uh, solarprofessor.com website and find my contact information uh, hopefully this, is, this has been helpful, just a quick introduction of um, inverters for you. And again, I'll have this, uh, uh, this video PowerPoint presentation posted on the Solar Professor website uh, as well. Thanks so much for watching.